Priya Kapoor, Director of International Heritage Conservation, is a research fellow pursuing a PhD on storage design and preservation of organic artifacts in tropical climate at the National Museum Institute. With an MA in Conservation and Restoration of Works of Art and ABFA in Sculpture, she is trained at Victoria and Albert Museum and Tate Britain, London. Priya's accolades include grants from Nehru Trust and Rotary Club, Amritsar. She's led restoration projects at Rashtrapati Bhavan and Al Sabah Collection, Kuwait. Currently consulting for Apijay Surendra Group and others, Priya is actively engaged with prestigious institutions like National Gallery of Modern Art and UNESCO, showcasing her expertise in heritage conservation worldwide. To stay connected, do subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button to get regular updates from us. We welcome you all to yet another session and an episode of Chaibari. In the studio today, I have Priya Kapoor with me, who is a proprietor of International Heritage Conservation. We welcome you to Chaibari today. And uh, we hope that you enjoy this session of conversation, which is more to let other people know about what you do and how insightful and enlightening it will be for the others. So welcome Priya. Thank you Tirenji. Let me just give the audiences a little bit of uh, an introduction on you. I was just reading and it's so surprising and it is very nice to know that you've been really excelling in the field when you began your education. You've been a gold medalist, you've received awards of a young achievers award, I believe at uh, times. You've done your studies international. So that's like a very complete and a good balance of both Indian and an international uh, way of being educated. Tell us something more about why conservation and why preservation and restoration. So I started my education as an artist. I'm a sculptor from Chandigarh Arts College. And then I never wanted to do masters uh, in the same field. So I chose restoration to do my masters. I did M.A. M.Phil from National Museum and then started following up my PhD into the similar thing. Uh, so while doing restoration, I realized that just the restoration of any heritage or art is important yet there are so many other parameters and so many other things to look upon so I started looking at the preservation of art then bringing new technology to art uh, art restoration also to look into what goes behind the scene and what are the methods and materials so so restoration is is very very deep it's not just about art or artists it's also about science science behind uh, how materials age, how we can preserve them. So there's lots more. So I think the fakers are very aware. They rarely know what a collector wants to see. Okay. And hence they will do a lot of artificial aging. ask you how is it about that you start or identify um, a work of art that needs to be restored how does it begin does it just begin with the condition of the artwork and uh, what is the next step that you uh, do or advise an owner or a connoisseur to say uh, this artwork does need restoration or preservation how do you go about it 
As I told you, my journey is not just about restoration, it's also about art. And I'm personally very much interested to interact with artists, work with them, look into their materials. In fact, there in past there has been instances when I actually got into the senior artist studios and looked into what they use because I feel that maybe 20 years down the line, I you know, they would require some sort of preservation or restoration. So that kind of knowledge on history, uh, on artist techniques is very important. So whenever any work comes, whether it's it's a master's work or it's a contemporary work, we, we start looking at the materials and the condition. And, uh, and yet we have also a lot of equipments to identify, examine, document, uh, see through the, the work uh, to preserve it for longer time. Okay, um, I just wanted to just personally know about uh, this, that this education or the studying that we do, uh, lots of us feel that, you know, it's basically the practical knowledge. I mean, if you do something on a desk or you do have something in front of you, that really helps you grow. But do you think people can be educated? Do you need these to know your technicalities? Well, you do need an educational background in this field to contribute more effectively to this field. To be more precise, restoration is not a skill. Okay. It's, it's a science-based. I uh, see. That's yeah. very interesting. So we are very close to art. We are very close to artists. Yet, we have to look into it differently, technically or scientifically. Uh, so hence, there are very few restorers. You, As you can see, there are yeah. so many artists and very few restorers because it takes ages to become a restorer. You, you need a specific education and then further you need a specific um, specialization on it. That's right. But being an artist yourself, doesn't it help uh, you to be more involved in what you do, whether it's just preservation or restoration or even analyzing it. So it's like when you're in a doctor's house, you know, when you're your family of a doctor, then what you do is you become half a doctor. You know, you start telling people because you're always hearing it. So, you know, once you're on the job, hands on, be it even a small pot or a book, or any paper restoration. I believe you do paper restoration very well because that's how I got to uh, know about, you know, uh, preservation and restoration comes later. It's more an exercise of a preservation of artworks. So what do you feel? I mean, is it more what you've learnt in your education or is it more hands-on, what you do? I would say it's it's a profession which was driven by passion. So okay. anytime I, I receive any artwork in my studio, I'm always overwhelmed to, to look into it. Uh, and that interest is very important to restore, to, to see it. Uh, and in. I'm sure it helps uh, uh, you learn uh, and discover more materials, more mediums, because grandmother time or whatever. So I'm I'm sure you must be exposed to a lot of different mediums. Do you want to talk about some good mediums, difficult mediums, or any such experience that you've had, you know, while uh, saying, oh, this is something that I need to remember. Yeah, you've given 200% of your time and your effort, you know, I have to save this. So I go back to my, my trainings when I did my masters. It was a very basic course on restoration of anything, any media, whether it's organic, inorganic, whether it's tangible, intangible. It's a very journal course from mm -hmm. National Museum. And then I went to Victoria and Albert and Tate. Uh, I worked on Turner Collection at Tate Britain. Uh, so definitely, you know, that, that international exposure uh, had bring a lot on, on, on platter for me for, in India. And I never wanted to stay there. I always wanted to come back, look into my country's art, my art, my heritage or our heritage, you can yeah. say. They've stolen so, it all from us there, yeah. 
it, was, it all belonged here. It all just went there. Yes, so. that's that's very sad because when I was working with Victoria and Albert Museum, and uh, I was working with the Asian Gallery, and most of the objects were, I think, taken away at when the Britishers came here. So of course it is very sad, but the the point is that they have to be safe and preserved yeah. wherever they they stay. So whether in our country or in any other country, the aim is just that they stay. So we are, at least we are able to see them and you know look at them. We can go back to see what our Indian cultural heritage was. It is some kind of a continuation that we can keep prolonged for our uh, coming generations and our future generations. So I also tell children and uh, young people mm -hmm. that uh, restorers are also, you know, the, the, the keepers of history. Nothing would be there if we the restorers are not That's there. That's really it, wonderfully said and I'm, I should con congratulate you for, you know, doing that. Uh, being a restorer, being a custodian of our uh, Indian heritage. That's really, really important. Yeah. So yeah. our aim is to preserve history. But then it also has so much to do with current art and artists. So, so I believe, uh, you know, as we research into materials, in uh, being a restorer, I also feel that uh, insight on materials for young contemporary artists is also very important. So, mm -hmm. I think I would like to talk about that also here, mm. where we do some mentorship programs uh, for contemporary artists, young mm. artists, to tell them that what are the do's and don'ts and, you know, what would where your work will not be uh, live longer or, or will be preserved so so you so guide that, them and tell them that you know do not go by this material go by that now in the market with the latest technologies and uh, explorations of so many uh, different mediums uh, you know contemporary artists are really experimenting and they're experimenting very widely with a lot of different mediums so um, I'm sure that's what uh, that's the way you try and guide them to say, "Ye use karo to iska thoda longevity hoga uh, life ka," or is it just? So I think that you know the contemporary artist using new media's is very exciting, mm -hmm. and we also have another branch in restoration which is called time-based media or new media's, but. Mm -hmm. Coming back to to they using different things and uh, you know uh, experimenting, experimenting with their work, I think my what I feel responsible is that of course they should do that experimentation, but then they should also have a perception on longevity of whether they want this to survive, to survive or or not survive so so there there can be some additions or improvements in their own methodology which which can be so do you you give them advice to support that longevity yes. or support the way um, it is uh, you know kept now after having talked about restoration and the mediums and everything the next step comes to the storage bit of it you know, that's something that we all find very difficult, you know, whether it's a piece of art that we personally own. And uh, going back to artists where they have, you know, huge uh, uh, studios that are full of uh, artworks and then institutions, the art institutions. Uh, talk about um, how archiving and storage in art institution also go along with restoration and it becomes a part of preservation. So initially when I started my career, I, as I, I mentioned that I was just a restorer. I all, always used to look into cleaning of works or restoration or... So I never looked. So gradually as I evolved, mm -hmm. uh, my career is about 22 years old. Mm -hmm. So as I evolved, I started realizing that uh, to do extensive treatment on art is can be very devastating so so I shifted to preservation of art and then we started designing art storages preservation units so so we have this new concept of green storage green storage okay. so this the storage is a visual storage it looks like a locker but it is a visual storage where you can actually see everything which is under display I see Okay. And 
And then we try not to run much of Havoc system or air conditioning. So mm -hmm. it is called green storage because there is a certain, you know, ventilation system we create or a, a very basic ducts we create where... Uh, and also, uh, we can't ha have a greenhouse effect with running 24-7 air conditioning and putting artworks into a parameter which... Or have dehumidifiers and the... Yeah, uh, because these artworks have stayed fine throughout mm -hmm. since ages. There was a time when they, they were not in museums and, and they were all surviving. So, yeah. you know, looking at, taking an example from that, so we started with this new concept of uh, green storages. Okay. Now, going back to storages, um, Priya, this is something that I've been wanting to know for a very long time. Do you also um, advise your, um, you know, the, the people who come to you to say that, uh, you know, we have this, let's say, a repository or an inventory of, let's say, 10,000 works. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you also advise them on the nitty-gritties of how they package them, how the works need to be framed? Because uh, coming back to paper, like I had told you, that uh, that's how I got introduced to you. And, you know, paper being such a brittle uh, medium, you know, you, I'm sure it has to be really handled with care. So when you do advise your institutions who come, come to you with a large number of repositories. Do you also tell them about this framing bit and, you know, yes. uh, how, how to maintain it and keep it? Let's not, because abhi to sab bubble wrap is available, your plain sheets are available, so we just wrap them and uh, keep. But I know that's not a correct way to do it. Right. So canvases might have different uh, suggestions from you, the paper would. So if you could tell us a little bit about that. So when I was working with Tate Britain and Tate Britain has four branches, we always, and I shifted myself to technician department to understand how everything has to be mounted, how everything has to be framed. Mm -hmm. And there I, I learned different ways of wrapping them or packing them or mm -hmm. storing them. Uh, and it is very cost effective. Mm -hmm. Just that people are not very well aware about the materials like, you know, the materials like Tyvek, which are very, very easily available, which is, and, and muslin cloth other than bubble wrap. So, of course, this is a very important part where, you know, when things are traveling or getting transported or kept. So, you know, this becomes really a very essential yes. angle to the whole uh, preservation and the... Uh, maintenance, I think. I should call it more a maintaining of the... But uh, I think all my clients are very well aware at this stage because we have been educating them. So whosoever comes to us, they, they, they themselves are very educated or very aware about uh, how they, they have to keep or preserve, handle. handle. Uh, but most of the people who, who are my clients or who I've been, I'm, I'm working with are very, very aware. I feel, see, clients might be aware. Hum logo ko, we read about it. We know that this is the way we have to do a certain thing. But what happens to the actual handlers? You know, people who work on the next level. See, it's always not the owners who are going to pack or uh, do things. It's the next level. I mean, the ones who really keep the storage and handle each and every work. It's, it's those people. Uh, I believe you do hold workshops where you train uh, people also how to handle art and you know even with a minimalistic thing of a blow brush. So uh, th these are very small things that I have learned. So, but it's, it's, it's a good opportunity that the Chibrary has given us to get more insight information from you about this. So tell us more about these workshops that you conduct on how to maintain art for teams who yeah. work so, under. So uh, as International Heritage Conservation, which is my organization, which works globally, it's a very small company organization, but it works globally. And we have worked with Louvre Abu Dhabi and Sri Lanka archives and many other museums and organizations. So we definitely r run uh, workshops, sometimes in partnerships, sometimes individually. But uh, from past few years, uh, I'm, we are not doing any of the workshops. The mm -hmm. reason is that gradually, uh, from past four years, 
we are more attracted to technology which is using mm -hmm. tech in restoration yeah that's going to be my next session <laughs> with you so yeah. i will be talking about that but why these workshops are important why don't you do it for people in our country itself i believe now national museums uh, entire collection is moving off somewhere right because they're going to yes. pull down the building but uh, that must be very frail fragile you have any inputs on that to give so i i do teach at national museum institution i, I see yeah so where we have this course on i do course on paper paper conservation and preservation and histology also stuff like that uh so yes we are interested but just that after covid the not much happening so mm -hmm. definitely maybe if you request we can do we can do workshops but all you. the more reason covid was one time when people have just sat down there nothing has happened i'm sure nobody has even moved their artworks around yeah so now all so, the more reason that you need to um you know talk about it and uh, i'm sure this opportunity today will give lot of focus and lot of food for thought for people to uh, think about ki hum humne apne artwork ko kaise rakha hai do we need to go actually look for a restorer or do we need to go look for proper uh, suggestions on the storages so definitely you have raised a very important uh, thing and uh, So maybe this year we can plan about three or four workshops in this, and uh, and I think it will be very beneficial. Yeah, and now coming back to the the very talked about uh, AI coming in. So AI is coming in our lives in all different other ways. We see the governments talking about it. We see news channels talking about it. and both negative and positive you've been working and you've been uh, having an exposure an international exposure to this where technology usage for uh, you know analyzing and uh, restoring and um, you know uh, trying to know what's the probably the age of the artworks or the pigmentations or whatever what is it that you're trying to get into um our country or get into the city for us with the use of the latest technology so it's not any more the uv stick that we use but what more than that and after this i would also want you to address another thing how important it is right now with art being as a, a luxury people buying uh, crores of worth of art how important does this use of technology help people buy art okay so give you a brief introduction there are three aspects of you can say authenticity in art mm -hmm. one is the provenance where you have a certification or or you have a state saying that this is genuine this is or or living artist certifying their works second is ai ai is machine learning and then third is tech so perhaps i i don't believe uh, in in i mean provenance is definitely very important and it gives us insight into history of anything but it can to it can be pushed to a, a, a certain levels coming to ai ai is a machine learning so whatever you train your machine it will tell you that oh yeah. is that so so there can be some errors mm -hmm. there is a chance there can be some errors mm -hmm. in because whatever so it's you it's not like 100% proof no it okay. is not it's like you know other platforms Accurate, a, yeah other uh, other uh, ai platforms where you know whatever you you teach them they mm -hmm. will just bring back the the data they will just compile the data process and and give you the results so i'm more interested in tech, tech technology i see yeah. so in terms of technology yes to start with we do lot of hyperspectral imaging i see what's that <laughs> okay so the light has seven wavelengths i see yeah beta gamma x ray uv ir like that i see so if you see any object with these different wavelengths with the help of filters mm -hmm. 
filter and different light source, you can actually see all the layers. I see. Okay. So some of the light source will penetrate through the paint. Some of it will show it superficially, like say ultraviolet. Mm -hmm. It shows very superficial layer, uh, showing you retouchings and, and later additions. I While see. hyperspectral imaging can can show you the under layers, the different mm -hmm. layers of the artwork. So, I see. So this is the new technology we are bringing, but I would not like to talk about it because we are still doing trials, we are doing still doing researches, we still are uh, on R and D right mm -hmm. now, and to to give a validate services, this mm -hmm. has it will take a few months. Yeah, I'm sure it will take a lot of it requires, research, and I'm sure it needs a lot of support from the art fraternity too. I mean, when you spoke about that, you get into layers of it. I wanted to understand from you, uh, there must be artists who must be either drawing on their canvases, they do their sketching, the, the basic, uh, this thing. Can this technology go to that level that you can see that they drew pencil or coal? Yes, of just, course. Just very inquisitive about yes, this. Yes, of so. course, yes. So it can actually show you all the layers, mm -hmm. the, the drawings. So it's like an in-depth. The in drawings, yeah. Even okay. the polymerization of the paint. Okay. Because what happens when you paint it mm -hmm. and, and there are certain adhesives which polymerize, after a certain period of time, the paint becomes very stable. I see. And it creates uh, uh, structures, the chain structures, which you mm -hmm. can actually see with this technology. Okay. So I'm hoping a lot, I'm banking up a lot on this new technology, yet there's much more to, to be done or, or to come. Um, and I also feel that the future generation of restorers mm -hmm. has to be tech based. Mm -hmm. you know, that's the way to go. Yeah. In any, any I, I'm sure world. in every field now we are using computers <laughs> and you know, some kind of technology or something. Even apps get created where they help you lose weight and they help you maintain your walks and everything. So I'm sure something, an introduction like this would be really, really a greater contribution to the um, art field and to the technology and it will be, I'm sure, uh, a service provided to art as a whole, holistically. It's not just restoring or preserving it or whatever. You are able to uh, diagnose it. It will be like a diagnosis for um, art. Um, I just wanted to know how many Ravi Varmas have you Restored. <laughs> That's very personal. <laughs> and uh, what is the other kind of restorations that you do apart from paintings and paper? So is it sculptures also that you do? Stone sculptures or wooden uh, sculptures? What is? What are the other mediums that you restore? So I I would like to answer your first question. Mm -hmm. How many Ravi Verma? Yeah. So I think about. 15 have come to my studio and I realized about three to four were genuine mm -hmm. and rest were all uh, uh, digital print. Mm -hmm. uh, the paint was done over it. Mm -hmm. But that's also very personal and, and at this platform. Point, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's a very yeah, challenging. Not, but sorry, I'm trying to get nice you to into it. About. But that's yeah. not the idea. But it is also for people to get more aware about it, you know. Uh, if we go about, if we talk about Ravi Varmas, we also talk about Durandars, we talk about very other old artists also, you know, where uh, there were no certificates at that time, you know. All these guys were doing portraits, I believe, of the royals and of the kings and the queens and of course the, the Britishers. But uh, Ravi Varma, why it always strikes me very clearly is because, you know, the kind of intricacy that he did his works with, whether it was his jewels, whether it was the eyes. And uh, when you see an old painting of Ravi Varma, which is badly flaking, you know, as a buyer, he would say, Achha, ye to purana kaam hai. I'm sure this is a Ravi Varma and all that. But Yes, after having spoken to you and after being in the art field for so many years, one does realize that the Ravi Verma needs to be given a special attention to, you know, than the others. So, so I think the fakers are very aware. 
they really know what a collector wants to see okay. and hence they will do a lot of artificial aging lot of flaking at this point the collectors have to be very aware of what they are getting and why because the vivoma used very good quality of materials so there is lesser viability that you know they are flaking badly there are so many other artists who didn't use materials very well and but mm -hmm. when it comes to ravi verma or maybe suza they used oh they suza used, also ah but yes they used 100 years we are celebrating the centenary yeah. of suza sab this year yeah. yeah so they used the materials very well so i don't feel there should be so much of issues but of course there is a message to collectors about mm -hmm. you know the awareness about you know what to look at and and not to get into counterfeit what to look at and how to look at and where to go yeah and to and get. not to get into counterfeits because mm -hmm. you know that that is not very great thing um, so collectors have to be very aware the 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 gallery the artists themselves also have to be i also see a lot of uh, counterfeits by the living artists now so that's that's a big problem in the industry mm -hmm. well this is another separate issue that we would uh, address you know because i know these are connected both of them are connected but uh, lots of people might not like being told that this work is correct not in, in incorrect and uh, some of us who have been in the industry for so long you know suddenly feel that hum to authenticators hain hamari eyes bata deti hain ki ye kaam sahi hai ki nahi hai so good let us take support of technology where gold is gold yeah. and a suza is a suza and a ravi verma is a ravi verma yeah, it is very so, similar to the fake diamonds yeah, you know yeah yeah they can't be a gold also like yeah, you say fake gold so so of course there there is technology to look into uh, the diamonds and gold and so should be in art which is very important so so i highly recommend and i i highly trust the the technology part of it rather than uh, just a visual examination or just looking at it and you know hmm. so priya you have given the message to the connoisseurs art lovers collectors what would you like to tell people would you advise them to take restoration as a professional this thing or any message that you would want to give young restorers so may i go back and and mm. answer your second question oh, did i miss it yeah, sorry <laughs> second okay. question so that was about that what all we do mm -hmm. so under international heritage conservation which is a umbrella organization um, i'm expert on paper because yeah. i studied and did my specialization on paper and then preservation and now new technologies of mm -hmm. uh, art authentication and uh, research uh, but then we have more people we have more trained staff who look after oil painting section uh, we do restore ceramics and porcelain and and couple of sculptures we just restore the painted textiles uh, not the woven ones because they are very close to the paintings you yeah, know they are yeah, very yeah. similar to the case of painting yeah, yeah. so and then also we do storages we design storages we customize them for okay. collections we run uh, amcs for collectors which is uh, annual maintenance contract and we just tell them that you know you don't need to look after your collection we will look after because we have a trained team we have trained eyes so mm -hmm. we we run that uh, under our programs mm -hmm. and then certainly uh, workshops and and uh, mentorship programs for practicing artists mm -hmm. so as as art field is growing i don't Spanning see yeah, yeah i do yeah so i don't see much of the restorers coming in and mm -hmm. and there are a couple of reasons one you have to study for very very long like i had to study for 15 years to become a restorer mm -hmm. which is practically not viable and it's very underpaid back breaking job actually nobody knows about it so much also na we think of restorers only when we break something or something falls from the wall it's only now that people have अच्छी सभी फील्ड्स में आप देखें तो अब हम लोग रियलाइज करने लगे हैं हर एक चीज का स्पेशलाइजेशन होता है 
there is a person who takes care of x y z and it's uh, it's very sad to know that there are very few people who would be interested in taking up restoration as a profession but go back you go back to any profession say go back maybe to after a listening to you today they might <laughs> yeah. who knows go back to a, a, a profession like doctors they were general physicians everyone used to go to them and then yeah. people then doctors became specialized they, they, and, they and specialized and, in and, and then people started going to a specialized doctor it's a similar case i think the the field has to develop a bit more and become more scalable mm -hmm. uh, so and also our collectors and uh, artists have to be very aware of what to do how to do whom to go to mm -hmm. so now there is a time when we have more specialized restorers how much time do you spend in your studio restoring i show <laughs> the whole day i always tell my team that i work in two shifts from 9 to 5 okay. we restore and from 5:30 to say 9 mm -hmm. we look into what we have done That's so the research part of it reading about the history the materials which takes a lot of time to understand because you can't just put anything on while we are restoring mm -hmm. we have a, a time tested so it's material. a whole process that uh, yes. you follow so it must be really back breaking the whole day to be like Nine to five, just on one artwork or on one. So uh, you have literature. answered. You have answered why such less restorers yeah. because it's such a back-breaking job and it requires. I know. Lot Today is a time where everybody is wanting to make instant money. Everything has to be very, very well provided. I would say. So, this, well, I this... would. I would also add to it that uh, there is a passion class and and an artist. look at our artists they work so, so much hard. so sure. hard sure. and don't even think about what they're going to yeah, get yeah i mean if you see the size of the canvases that they work on it's crazy i it's was it's commendable yeah it is it is commendable then if it comes to you for restoration it becomes all the more commendable for you to having spent time on that huge and uh, humongous yeah but we sizes. are we are very well geared up right mm -hmm. now because uh, since ages since many many years i started going to art studios and and you know starting researching on their work so So, and i'm also teaching you know my national museum teaching and my national archive teaching also i i train my students that mm -hmm. you know these are the kind of problems you are going to face so so and what are, what about this restoration that takes place in these huge buildings that we have the heritages that we have that's a completely different feel from your this thing or is it part of a stream from on in restoration so we say there are two kinds of restoration one is tangible other okay. is intangible i see tangible is anything which moves and intangible is which doesn't move like our buildings or wall paintings and the buildings and so, temples and other yeah. other things so so most of us my organization works on tangible heritage oh, okay whatever okay. moves mm -hmm. that's something that i have known only today i didn't think about it tangible and intangible and now answer what is the message that you would want to give young restorers who are already in the field well i would like them to follow technology adapt Te to it yeah adapt to it because it's not only about um, art forensics or or finding fake forgeries but it's also to do with what are they going to use or or what kind of technology has to be given and also it will collect a lot of data you know as one goes by and by it's a lot of accumulation of data that would help which is very important which is so important because tomorrow even if you start using technology and you have to draw some certain comparisons of different time periods you need to have a comparative data to do yeah, it yeah, so definitely sure. we are also building up that gradually we work on couple of collections very important collections and and we are uh, you know uh, putting all the data in our uh, software right now and yeah. once we are ready then uh, it will it will come out and and i then think people can also us. use it i think it will be very yeah. useful for other people and researchers mm -hmm. So we thank you uh, for this lovely session. 
and this lovely conversation i'm sure lot of people have uh, you know gathered good information and uh, good utility and uh, education from this so before we leave i just wanted to ask you what do you feel about this platform jibrary so first of all uh, kiran i would like to thank you to invite me here and entire team of jibrary um since restoration is very important <coughs> part of art industry and it them from many months and i was actually dreaming about it and and then you know you made this happen this happened yeah. and so i was very motivated to see all the sessions and all the talks they have been doing and how they have been promoting and lastly uh to to various uh, artistic practices so um and and when i told my friends and they were all very excited about it because most of them know about this platform so this is definitely you know already very popular and i'm so glad that you know you, you invited me here and the entire team invited me here so so i think uh, this they what they're doing will will you know be very beneficial for the art industry yeah in the long run definitely yeah and especially for our new generation because they can learn so much they can you know understand so many uh and the kind of people you are getting on the panel or to interview of course they're very senior artists and and they have lots to um, share, share and, uh, on this platform so definitely this is a great platform and i i would recommend more and more people to watch it see uh and uh, definitely it is very popular so much more to come for this so thank you priya it was the initiative of this platform is also to cover different walks of the art life restoration is just a very small peep that we've given them today uh we hope sometime later we um do get into a more serious and a more formal uh con uh, conversation about uh, restoration and preservation i think this was just the beginning so we hope to have you more often for the guiding people working with youngsters and inspiring this field thank you so much thank you my pleasure ma'am so thank you for inviting me on this platform um this is superb platform where you could meet all the senior artists and all the art fraternity and people associated with art so i would request the, the my friends and family to subscribe this channel more uh spread it because so much more interesting content coming in here i hope you all have enjoyed this episode and this conversation which was an exchange of ideas sharing of uh, educational inputs lot of advices do stay in touch with us do stay connected to us by subscribing to this channel and hitting the bell icon for regular updates you will hear from me very soon on our next session keep watching chaibari this is kiran mohan signing off from the sets of chaibari